Now, Rosie, when we make a pudding, we would normally have maybe some roast beef or some pasta or something first, but we're not going to do that this episode. We're going to get straight into it and cook three delicious puddings. I can feel the kilos adding on. Now, what I'm going to do is show you a really easy pudding. You get up from the table, you've had your dinner, and you want to throw it together quickly. Great for the kids to make. Yep. What I'm going to start with is three quarters of a cup of flour, and I'm making sure I use some really good self-raising flour. This one is really light and fluffy, just like me. Now, what I'm going to add is three quarters of a cup straight in there. Yep. There we go. In it goes. I'll pass it over to you. you. I've also got three quarters of a cup of the uh, this brown sugar here, which I love. This no sugar. problem. Of course, could be coconut sugar as well. Now I'm going to get you to uh, to crack three eggs straight into here, got while it. I sneak over and under you and grab some ginger. I've got some ginger microplane. Just a little bit of ginger for some spice. It's the sort of thing that you would add to a Christmas pudding, isn't it? A little bit of ginger for spice. Ginger in puddings, I absolutely love it. That little fieriness, that, just like me. Exactly, you fire, it's like a firecracker. There we go. Now, you can use dried ginger if you want. I love fresh ginger. It works really well for me. I've got three quarters of a cup of milk goes in there as well, and some butter. If you can pour that butter in there, I'll get you to handle that lovely melted <laughs> butter. That's 120 grams of melted butter. And over in that little jug over there, I've got some golden syrup, three tablespoons of golden syrup. Okay. I want you to pour that in. And while you do that, I'll just stir this around to incorporate that lovely flour, the sugar, and I'll break up those egg yolks. You can tell these are really good egg yolks or free range eggs because they haven't broken up yet. They're pretty strong and they're holding yep. together. So what I'll do is I'll get the whisk up and down and bust them. And you can see when I bust them up, you get those yellow streaks all the way As through. As a treat, I used to have a tiny little bit of this on my porridge when I was a kid. We have a, lots of that in Britain. As a treat, I used to pour that on top of my wheat bix, because wheat bix <laughs> is what we have in Australia. I'd put that on there, or honey, or maple syrup, but treacle's gorgeous. But I'm going to throw a few alternatives in this. You knew that was going to come when we were going to do puddings, OK? So, of course, we could la, do la, a la, try la. with molasses <laughs> and a bit of honey, brown yeah. rice syrup. Any of those will do fine. There we go. So if you run out of any of those things, you can grab it from, the, uh, <laughs> from your pantry. Now, what I'm going to do is pour this into my little pot here. Mm -hmm. What I've done with the pot is I've got some melted butter and brushed around the outside of it. And you know, a, a pot like this is perfect to cook in the oven. It holds up really well, holds its heat. Now what I'm gonna do is pour this into the center. And whenever you're baking, you always need a rubber spatula to get everything out. So I'll just scrape that around there like that. And dads, if you are making this for the first time, if you wanna treat the kids, always leave a bit of mixture in the bowl because the kids love to eat it. I reckon that's the best part. They do. So Rosie, over there I've got two cups of water which is nice and warm. I've got a cup of brown sugar and some golden syrup, about a quarter of a cup of golden syrup. I'm going to pour it all in there. You're going to grab that brown sugar and pour that in there as well. There sure we go. Do. Pop it straight in there and I'm going to get you to whisk it together. All of it? I'll throw it all in, every single bit of it. Wish that was. I didn't put it in the bowl to, uh, to be thrown <laughs> in the bin. We're going to use every single bit of it. Now make sure I get all of this out. And a good way to get the last little bit is with your finger because you can make sure, because you need to quality test everything you yeah, cook. you do. Mm. I love golden syrup, it is lovely. We set together. Now this is the sauce part of the pudding. What you do with a self-sourcing pudding, and this is the, something that, that I do with all my puddings, you start with the base, which is the cake base, which is basically what we have in the pot here. And to that we pour in the syrup. And what that does is goes all the way down, picks up all the flavour and thickens up and sits in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is grab that off you so um, I can show you what I do. I pour it in very carefully around the actual base here. So it goes to the bottom and it becomes nice and saucy down the bottom. It'll pick up all that flour and all those other flavors and it will make the most delicious butterscotch pudding. Now this is gonna go into the oven. I've made sure I've preheated the oven yep. to 180 degrees Celsius. Pop it in there, it takes about 40 minutes. It'll come up nice and gently because we've got the self-raising flour. Then we'll take it out and scoop some lovely ice cream or cream or whatever we want to have with it. This will be delicious <laughs> and in the oven we go. <laughs> Now, Rosie, it not only looks delicious, it smells fantastic, doesn't it? It does. Now, it does. What, what I'm going to do is cut out the bottom here. You can see all that sauce down the bottom. I'll pick up this plate. It's the only way I can do this, I think. It looks there very you go. light, however, I know it isn't. Oh, <laughs> rich and delicious, and the sauce over the top there. Look at that. 
<laughs> nice thick so sort of... This is a naughty <sighs> one. This isn't every so often in moderation. I don't need to remind you, but when you're doing it, do it well. That's what I say. Go big or go home. Yeah. And that's the way to do it. Now, of course, we need some cream on there as well. Nice big dollop of cream. Double cream is the only way to do it. I'll bring that in. Some icing sugar over the top there to make it even more delicious. You're going to make the other nutritionists get talking about me. Oh, I'm going to change you. You know, we might have all the healthy stuff most of the time and I will try my best, but every now and again, you've got to come Just to the dark keep side. keep putting the mint on there. Okay, pop the mint on there like that. And because I love icing sugar so much, I'll put a bit more on there. Now, have you got a spoon? Because let's get into this one. We will do indeed. Oh, fantastic. Looking forward to this, I am. I'll let you go first, you know what I mean? I recommend if you're going to eat this, Rosie, you take a couple of deep breaths and get some oxygen into your lungs so that it Need spreads around get. your body because when you taste this, it's just going to take your breath away. It's just going to be... Oh, it smells fantastic. It smells it's really good. It smells soft. a little bit like childhood, I must say. The double cream is nice and gooey. It smells great. <laughs> it does taste delicious. It really does. I'd like a smaller portion, I think, but... That really does taste very, very good. Very you, sweet. You can have the smallest portion you could possibly imagine because this you is you enough for me. It. I love this. This is good, good, gorgeous. This is dessert. This is special food. This it is, is when the kids have been good all week and done their homework. You can whip one of these together on a Sunday night and give them a treat. This is gorgeous. No, right? It is. It's very nice. Very comforting. I can't wait to try your lemon pudding after this. Good. Lemon pudding. What an episode. <laughs>